You may remember last time, this was two days ago, you started to look at amounts and quantities, like actual amounts of stuff like liters of this or this many centimeters or people or tickets or all kinds of objects that can be measured, quantified. We looked at these and then we thought about, well, what if you could take a fraction or a percentage of these amounts and quantities? That's what you looked at last time, okay? So it's like, all right, I've got eight pieces of pizza in my pizza. Uh, what if I wanted to eat such and such a percentage of that? How many pieces would that be? Okay, so we're still in the same idea today, but we're going to go in the other direction, right? When you've got an amount or quantity, which is some fraction or percentage, of something else, like, oh, okay, I ate three of the eight pieces of pizza. What, what percentage would that represent, okay? So we're kind of going in the other direction this morning. Let's have a look. Uh, if you open up to page 228, 229 is where you'll find today's exercise. I'm going to run through uh, a couple of examples with you. But I'll start, and I'll put this all over on the right-hand side so that it, it stays there and we can refer to it. Um, when you're addressing these kinds of questions, I'm going to give you sort of four general style tips, which will always be really, really helpful for you, okay? Four tips. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'd love you to write these down before you start your exercise or even do your examples, because when we do the examples, you'll see how useful these tips are. Okay. So, tip number one, I'm just going to do like the... Um, the most simple boiled down definition here, but I'll give you a full sentence and I'll explain. And in the examples, it'll all make sense when it comes together. Okay. So the first tip is read the questions really, really carefully. Read the question carefully. It doesn't take long to realize because we're talking about stuff, objects, amounts, real physical things. Uh, and you can see it in the questions. Everything is very wordy. Right? Uh, the technical way of saying this is that they're very literacy heavy. You've got to interpret, you've got to understand the language. It makes all the difference to you understanding the question and then answering it rightly or wrongly based on whether you have looked carefully at the language given to you in the question and if you know what it means. Okay, so this tip number one, read really carefully. Okay? Uh, tip number two is kind of like the opposite. There's so many words there, that's why you have to read carefully. But because there are so many words in the question, you ought to use words in your answer, right? Your answers to all of these kinds of questions shouldn't just be a series of numbers and equations. You probably can get the right answer just with the numbers and equations. This is maths after all. But in order to be able to communicate clearly what your numbers and equations actually mean, and then get a right answer out of it, you should be using words in the actual formation and working of your question, which is what I'll show you, okay? Speaking of working, I mean, we've said this before, but please include all your working. I'm going to emphasize it again this time because a lot of what we're going to be doing, like, they're icky percentages and fractions, right? So you will obviously rely on a calculator for big parts of answering the question. Uh, by the way, if you haven't already got it out, you should get your calculator uh, because you'll need it for these questions. Now, for a large number of these questions, you might be able to do all of the working on here because they're wonderfully powerful tools but you shouldn't even if you use the calculator for the whole question you should not therefore think oh, I don't need to include all my working when I'm writing it okay you're still about communicating how I got the answer so yes we'll be using our calculators but we should be including all the working that we're thinking through on the page okay last tip because, you know, for example, if I said, oh yeah, I ate three pieces of pizza, right, out of eight, okay, you're going to get a percentage out of that. Often the percentages will have many, many decimal places, or the fractions will be kind of awkward, okay? So you'll have to approximate at some point. Here's my last tip. It's at the end because the place you should approximate is at the end. You may have to approximate and say, oh, you know, uh, three pieces of pizza out of eight, I think is 37.5%. If I wanted that to the nearest percent, you would do that right at the very end. It's your last step, actually, to approximate, okay? Don't approximate early, because whenever you approximate, you change things a little bit. Uh, if I did to the nearest percent, 37.5 would be... Would it round up or down? It would round up to 38, wouldn't it? Because 0.5 is right on that point, which we decide it goes up. So 38%, I've introduced half a percent of error. 
okay? So that error, if I don't do it at the end, it's gonna flow onto the rest of my working. So, so don't do it at the beginning, do it at the end. <laughs>